let's assume we had a function called print user info and it just printed a name. So very simple, we're just gonna take the name and print it and it says name Don Felker. Now, let's say for whatever reason, I also need to have it take, sometimes it only needs the name, sometimes it only needs the age. So I'll say, you know what, I actually kind of needed another print user info function. And this one's going to have age and this one is going to be int. And so this time I can actually say, all right, well, I'm going to call this new one. This can be a new user. And this one's called Jane Doe. And I'm going to make her age of uh, 37. Uh, so now this one, print user info is going to, if we go to the definition of it, it's going to go to this function. And this one is going to go to this function. This is called function overloading. We're overloading the term print user info. So it has two different, has the same name, but it's taking different arguments here. Now, if I were to remove this argument, you'd see we get some errors here because we have the exact same definition here. This is the exact same function name and function parameters right here that are right here and that's going to be a problem so because we have a different parameter here age it's now considered a different signature to kotlin and say all right well you can overload that function and then of course we're probably going to have some information here that's a little bit different now again we could say well now i also want their their favorite color to be inside of here so i'd say fit you know fave color and that might just be a string for simplicity uh, now I have three overloads. So what we could do here is I say print user info. And you see, I have three different options. So I have one takes a string, one takes an integer, uh, a string and an integer, and one takes string, integer, and favorite color. And so, of course, then we'd want to change this. So it said favorite color. And this would say, using string interpolation again, their favorite color. So then I could print this user info. And I would say Frank... Um, Bindo, and we would say that his age is 22 and his favorite color is purple. And at that point in time, if we were to run these, each one of these are going to run a different function. So the top one's gonna to run the top one here, the second one's going to run this one here, and the third one's going to run this one here. Now, if you're already familiar with Kotlin and also its named parameters and its default values, well then I'm sure you can already imagine that, well, we could actually kind of clean this up a little bit. And to clean this up, you could actually kind of get rid of this and say, hey, you know what? Well, age is gonna be an integer. And if they don't provide it, I want it to default to zero. And a favorite color is going to be a string, of course. And if they don't provide it, we'll default to purple. And so we'll do that. Actually, you know, we can actually default it to an empty string if we would like. And then what it really allows us to do is get rid of this. See how we have this here it says, hey, there's a conflicting overload because we have this up here with the same values. Now, if I get rid of this, all these still work because we're using the named parameters. Now, of course, I would want to say age like this and fave color. So we could actually render the stuff um, and it would be there. So if I don't provide a favorite color, it's just going to be blank. If I don't provide an age, it'll be zero. Uh, and I've kind of cleaned it up and I still have this function overload options here, which I could say print user info. And then it's gonna give me the option of, hey, do I wanna use the default values? And that's how you can overload a function in Kotlin.